Here we go, we're gonna do the first part of our process of getting this wax clean for the missus. As you can see, it's pretty crappy, because this isn't like, this is actually just a brood comb and a bit of shit that was left in the bottom of a couple of boxes. So I thought we gotta, we gotta do a bit of primitive cleaning before we get to our cool new wax melter, so, because I don't think this is quite up to speed. So we're just gonna warm it up in the kettle, and then we're either, I don't know, we're either gonna tip it through a hessian sack, or we're just gonna let it settle out and get a disc and scrape it off. I haven't really decided yet. Depends how motivated I get. We're gonna put the wax in the saucepan, and then we're gonna put a little bit of water in the saucepan. Or are we gonna put some water in the saucepan before the wax? I think we'll put some water in the saucepan and then we'll put the wax in there and then we'll warm it all up and then it'll separate out and then we'll be able to go to the next stage. So, oh, by the way, this isn't demineralized water. This is just normal rainwater. It's just, I can't find a bucket. So, I think I think the buckets are in with the puppies. But we had a, our boxes that had some lovely little puppies. And so you've got to give, separate her off. And so she's got a few buckets of water in there to keep her happy so she can keep her babies happy. Right, so I reckon she's gonna drop that in there. This is this is only a little bit. Of that. We've done some more earlier, so this is the bit that didn't fit in the first meltdown, which was lucky for you guys, because you get to see it. Oh, if I can get it out of the pot. Good God. Yum. Hang on. That's a bit bloody messy, isn't it? <laughs> God, that'd be different, would not it? There's still a fair bit of honey in this, like in this actual comb. Most of the time you get it out a lot better, but of course it's cooling off here in the Riverland, so it hasn't really drained out so well. But that's all right, it won't matter. We'll make some mead out of the bottom, out of the honey that's underneath the wax. If we can get it out of this pot, mind you. What have I got here? Let's see if I can get a sh Here we go. Ah, the dear wife's bloody spatula from the kitchen again. Goodness gracious. Never mind stealing her bloody tools. Now I'm stealing her kitchen equipment. Jesus, I tell you what. And the thing is, I can't even get away with this shit. I used to be able to get away with this crap, but now that's all filmed, she goes, hey, hey, that's where that is. <laughs> oh, God, there are things you do just so as you can get entertained out there. Just think of me when I'm getting growled at. <laughs> Come on, you can do it, you can do it, Duffy Moon. <sighs> God, this is much easier when it's warm. Oh, God. <laughs> I've got a big lump going on here now. Oh, Lord, it's a big lump. Bunch of waxy, booey, comfy, lucky, yummy muck. Oh, bloody hell. The trouble a bloke goes through to make a candle. God damn it. <laughs> Mind you, I wouldn't know how to make a candle. I'm just trying to get the stuff ready for the candle making person. Sorry, darling. God, look at that. She's not gonna want that back anyway, is she now? Jesus. Oh, fuck it out. Oh, I'm gonna just go and wash my hands before I put my stove on, because, yeah, I get that all on me knobs that we knew were good. Stove knobs, that is, thank you very much. <laughs> We'll just let that do its thing for a minute while we get some other stuff organized. Give it a little stir. You don't want it too hot, otherwise you'll freak it out. So then this will separate, the wax will come to the, well actually, the light crap will come to the top, the wax will be in the middle and then there'll be the honey at the bottom and then there'll be another layer of other populacy muck at the bottom of the disc of wax when we finish with that. And then we'll, that'll be like the first part of the process, which will be cool. I will see what happens. It looks like our wax is nearly ready to get organized. We've had a few different goes at trying to clean this stuff up. We've had a little, with our little strainers and our little buckets and tipping shit through there. But this little bit, we're gonna try and stick through an old um, sandbag. So I thought if we hook this bag over the box here or something, I might roll it up a bit because I don't want it dangling in the liquid. And we'll just gently tip it through the bag into the bigger container and then the wax will settle out on the top. All the crap will stay in here and the wax will settle on top of the honey liquid. And we'll just make a decision what we're gonna do with the honey liquid afterwards. So I'm just gonna staple it to me little, one of my little nuke boxes on top of me hive catching box. <laughs> That'd be recycling gone mad, innit? Anyway, what the hell? We gotta make every, make every bit count.
Don't staple your finger. That old crap. That'd be crap, wouldn't it? <laughs> There we are, look at that. That's a bit of excitement. Whew. I don't know. What's the worst thing that can happen anyway? I reckon we'll just take this little high-tech apparatus out of the shed and out onto the track and hopefully my trusty cameraman with these muscles can help me tip it through here and we'll see what happens. I reckon around about here will be about as good a spot as any. Let me stick that there. Stick our bag on top of there. Then we're just going to get the saucepan and tip the muck through there and see what happens. Like I say, what's the worst thing that can happen? We get burnt, that's probably the worst thing that would happen. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens, eh? We're going to tip it through here and we'll collect our first bit of cleaning up. We got some bees coming around for a bit of a visit. They didn't take them long. They must be able to smell the honey in this. I'll just give it a little stir. <laughs> Scrape a little bit of stuff off the edge of the hessian. Get the last bit in. I think that worked pretty good. So we'll just take our little top bit off. As you can see, the ladies are still having a bit of a feed here. They're getting a bit excited. Helping tidy up the rest. Well, I think this bag's probably going in the bin. Oh, that's heavy. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's my head, that's my head, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, crikey. <laughs> that's the, that's the, what's that? <laughs> what's that bloke? No, I shouldn't even make a joke about that. That poor bastard got stung by a steamroller. Cool. So we're just going to get this little bit of wax out of the top of this pot, which is what we're going to use to put in the wax cleaner next. So this is basically the pre, pre-cleaning pre, no. I don't know, the pre-pre-cleaning. <laughs> so anyway, this is just so you can start the, it's a brilliant arduous task to get this wax ready for everybody. Get off, don't sting me. Oh, golly. I'm trying not to get them trapped. Ow. This is not ideal, but anyway, it's a good start. So there's a later layer of the um, other Populous, populous. We've got all the, because when we put it through the bag, as you saw earlier, we stuck it through the bag, which got all the large stuff off. This would have been floating on the top. And then this is the other bit that settles underneath. Oh, and you just want to scrape that out of there. And you kind of want to do that when it's warm like this, because the longer you leave it, the harder it gets. So that's why we're out here dancing with the girls. Probably don't really want to drop it in my honey pot, because that's technically, that's why the bees are all hovering around this. They don't really give a toss about the wax. But they can, um, you know, they're after that sweet taste of that honey water down there. crap and I'm just reading the directions sitting here in the dark bloody crap winter time isn't it the sun goes down too damn early and you got to sit out here and get cold the only upside to it is you get to drink red wine because technically you've knocked off mind you the cameraman turns up and you can't knock off anyway I've got this cool contraption I've got to bought myself a I'm guessing that stands for Aussie because it's AU I'm gonna imagine that's an Aussie wax melter would that be right anyway it's got Australian made so that's pretty cool Gotta love us Aussies, we got shit going on. Anyway, I'm reading the directions, which you wouldn't believe, because it says here if you fuck this shit up, you don't get guaranteed. So we don't want to do that, especially if we're going to be filming it, because then you won't believe me if I do screw it up when I ring you up and I'm start blowing your shit up. So anyway, it's all good. So we're going to try and make some pure wax. According to the website, we get some nice clean wax out of this rather than dirty wax. It's a, so this is a double boiler. If you don't know what a double boiler is, you have hot water on the outside and then a cooler chamber in the middle. So instead of going to all the trouble of having a saucepan inside a saucepan, you've got a purpose built saucepan inside a saucepan. I guess that would, anyway, doesn't matter. Believe it or not, I've read these instructions a couple of times. I'm still slightly confused. I should have given the cameraman a chance to read them, but you know, he wants to blame me when I blow it up, so it's all good. So let's go, it says here, first of all, 
we have to put some water in the outside chamber. So you've got an outside chamber here and obviously an inside chamber. So the water is going to fill up in between that and the saucepan that's inside. So if you've ever tried melting chocolate, you'll know what a double boiler is. You get the, well, what the hell, you get a silver bowl or a metal bowl on top of a water source and you boil the water in that and then you're softly melting the chocolate. Of course, you could just be cool like my mother-in-law and she just does it in the microwave in a jelly dessert bowl, as long as you're very cautious. Because if you're not cautious when you do it in the microwave, you end up with baked chocolate, which is kind of shit. Here we go. So we've got the double boiler and we've got to fill it up with water. So we're going to fill up the outside part according to the instructions, which says caution. That's a, that must be happened quite often. And anyway, you've got a little thermometer. So you go, whoop. Check book. That could be a bit rude if you pop. Anyway, don't. That's what they do to the puppy dogs, isn't it? When you go to the vet. Ooh, poor little things. Yeah, hang on a minute. Did they glue that shit in there? <laughs> How fucking awesome's that? That's brilliant. Look at that shit. That's fucking. I tell you what, Mr. Aussie Wax Melt of Dudes, that's a fucking brilliant idea. Check you guys out. You've even, you've even stuck the funnel to the threaded on bit that goes in the hole. Mind you, you haven't got real level. Look at that. Okay. It's a bit of a merry-go-round funnel. And I've stuck it a little bit crooked, so it looks like I did it myself, which is pretty bloody brilliant. So it's a Bush B-Man funnel. It's going to fit right in this place. I'm feeling quite confident. Anyway, so here's the insidey bit. So as you can see, the outside's a lot bigger than the inside part. So you're going to have all this wall here filled up with water, which is going to create your double boiler. And then you're going to put your wax inside here. And hopefully, in theory, the clean wax is going to pour out of there. And then my missus, my missus, who is quite ingenious, has discovered all these really cool uses for wax. Not just making candles. She made this wicked ass lip balm, which I'm not a lip balm person, as you can imagine. Anyway, you can imagine the Bush Bee Man with his lip balm isn't really happening. But anyway, I had a cracked lip during the harvest and it was really giving me the tingles up. See, I can't even do it. See, it's bloody no good not trying to swear. That's crap. Anyway, anyway, I rubbed a bit of that shit on there for a, no, hang on, I can't even say shit, because apparently if you say shit about beauty products, you're rubbing shit on your face, which is kind of weird. <sighs> anyway, I put her lip balm on my lips and on my cracked lip, and it healed it up in a couple of days, and I was most impressed. So if we ever figure out all the logistics and legal crap about that, and we get, actually get my wax melter working. Hence, we're here in the dark because the wife's going to get me the wax organised, you useless bush bee man. So here I am. So we're giving it a crack. You never know. If we get this shit worked out, you might have some bush bee man lip balms on your lips. So we had to buy some demineralised water, which is pretty simple to get from the supermarket because apparently, Mr. Aussie Wax Melter Dude, you'd be most impressed that did read your directions and it says that it's... Oh, shit, I'm, I'm cracked with memory, so it says we're using, hang on, I've got to put my eyes back on. We're using a certain grade of stainless steel, which is unit body is made of 302 grade stainless steel, which isn't as excitable as 316 stainless steel. I didn't even know there was grades of stainless steel, but anyway, apparently if you use the high grade stainless steel, the crap's really hard to use. And then that would have been price prohibitive because it says it would be another thousand dollars dear so. I think that would have been a little bit out That's got to sell a hell of a lot of lip balm to pay for my melter up machine. I wonder if the wife's going to buy that crap off me. Do you reckon I could, you reckon she'll buy the wax? Can you imagine that? Can you, you, know, can you just imagine that husband's out there trying to sell wax to your own wife? I, you know what? She's going to sell more lip balm than I could even sell honey and make a squillion and then not even pay me for my own wax, I'll bet you. I know how this is going to work. <laughs> anyway, sorry, here we go. Let's pour some water in our jacket. Oh, listen to that. We're going nicely. Pick that up for me. Come on. Oh, Jiminy. Oh, I've been out shoveling almonds all day today, so I'm a bit weary. Anyway, so what have we got here? Use demineralized water. Demineralized. Whew. Look at that. Hey, check that out. Check that out. Look. Oh, I even read it. And it even says it on here too. Ha! You'd be proud of me. <laughs> well, no, maybe not. <laughs> okay. And it reckons, so we've got a little thermostat around here. It reckons to run it at about 80 odd. So it says here, if you are using just cappings, the cappings honey, 
capping, cappings, you know, the capping bits. You don't need to add any water in the inside the actual saucepan or boiler or whatever you want to call it. But we are using some recycled old, old wax that we've already half cleaned, which you saw earlier when we did it in the saucepan. And we've cooled that off and we're going to run that. Because apparently you can't use brewed wax in this container because you'll block the taps up. But anyway, that's yet to be proven. I mean, you know, a black could always get a coat hanger and wriggle the friggin' shit through the hole and make it happen. But anyway, so I've got to go and get some water. So when you see me pour the water inside the saucepan, it doesn't have to be demineralized water in here. It's just that some slack prick can't find a bucket. So I'm just gonna recycle these plastic jars, all right? Just don't stress out. <laughs> It's like if I had a tap on, wouldn't it? Now, this is the moment when you tip that out or you get a texture and mark it. What should we do? We should tip it out. Maybe I'll tip it on, on your boot. They've even put a little awesome little hooky thing on the side of here so you can hook your, hook your, hang on. What the f does that do? How does that work? Anyway, you can hook your thumb up. I noticed here, you can hook. Well, maybe you can't. Maybe I'm full of shit. <laughs> oh, come on, oh, look at that. All right, Harry. You can hook your thermometer on the edge of the jolly wax machine we jig. So you don't even have to hang on to it. Well, that's pretty cool. So this is a little bit of pre-cleaning stuff. So we've got the, so we had some really, we had some really messed up grubby wax. And so I thought we'd just clean it up. That looks like a, that does look like a pizza, doesn't it? Does it look like a pizza? Or at least a pre-pizza. Anyway, let's break this shit up. Go for it. No! Oh! Anyway, we're just gonna plop the wakes in here. So. Sounds like you're in the toilet. Oh, except for the banging on the bottom part. Oh! <laughs> what do you used to say as a kid? What was that bloody comment that you used to make? dropping off the kids at the pool or something. Some rubbish that you say, oh my goodness me. That used to excite, that used to, I used to not like that when he was a, when he was a little boy and he used to make those jokes. <laughs> he didn't realize he was making jokes because he's my son and I make those stupid jokes all the time. <laughs> and until I actually watched myself record it, I didn't realize how many jokes I make or how bloody annoying I probably was. <laughs> Anyway, we've got to set the temperature between 65 and 75. So I'm going to go with 70 because I'm impatient, but patient enough. Because it says here, if you have your wax too hot when you melt it, the quality will be crap. And we don't want quality crap wax that my wife won't buy off me because that'd be, that'd be pretty shit, wouldn't it? We're about to go and have something to eat. So we'll let this little baby do her thing. It says you put it in here, set it up, let it warm up. Oh, I'm guessing it says here about eight to ten hours. So I would think, and we're going to come out and check this before we go to bed, and then we're just going to let it do its thing during the evening, and then tomorrow morning we'll come out and we'll turn on the tap, that tap to let some shit out, let that tap out, to let some wax out, and then hopefully before you know it, we'll have some wicked ass lip balm on your lips. Here we are next morning, trying out this wax melter you might machine. We've had her on all night, so we'll see what happens. Shall we have a little look inside? See what's going on? Oh, the soup's nearly done. That <laughs> looks pretty cool. We scooped a little bit of poop off the top last night. Apparently you're not meant to disturb it, so we might not disturb what's in there at the minute. But if you, when you separate out the wax, you know, like obviously this is a double boiler, but even in a normal saucepan or whatever, some of the light stuff floats to the top of the wax and the heavy sediment goes to the bottom of the wax. And so when you turn it off, you'll get a disc and you'll get the wax with the shit on the top that you've scraped off and you'll get stuff on the bottom of it, which you can cut off when it cools. The theory here is that we're gonna lower the wax below this tap a little bit. So we're just gonna pour out pure wax into this bowl, in, which will be the middle part that normally you have to try and cut out. So. That's the theory, I'm assuming that's the theory. I don't know, I haven't actually used this before. We're experiencing this for first. You know, if you were a professional bloody organizer of a station, you would do this crap off camera. But no, we would be the fun in that for you guys are all on this adventure with us. So we, we're, we're not like that. We're gonna, we're gonna let you see the, the faults as well as the victories. Anyway, here we go, we'll turn this tap on, eh? 
Right, so we'll let a bit of the muck out the bottom. See what happens. I don't know. Sorry, I've got my big head in the way. I don't know what I'm actually looking at. <laughs> I can't see through the tin, can I? What am I, Superman with Max Ray Vision? What am I kidding? Anyway, I reckon we'll give that a go. If a bloke had been organised, he would have had the tub back there a bit so we could have the bowl on the decks, like, like my jug there. But I'm a bit afraid to move the jolly thing now. So I reckon we're going to turn this tap on and just see what comes out, and then we might let a bit more water out. If we were doing cappings, apparently that would be the mead wash. So you could make your mead, mead beer with that. That still looks a bit like water, doesn't it? Here we're getting close now. See, that's the bottom bit. See how that's coming out? See, that's basically the bottom of the wax. See how that's... So we're nearly there. Because it will se separate it out, which is the idea of it sitting here all night. So we'll let a little bit more water out. I can't find one of my wife's bloody um, scrapers, so I'm going to have to use my fancy... See, this shit stuck with me bowl pretty good. Crikey! <laughs> Come on! What the hell? Oh. This is why professionals do this off camera, not while everybody's watching you. And then you wouldn't see all this bad stuff happen. What the hell? It's like shit to a blanket, this stuff. That's just like, don't want to come off. Oh, I think we're going to have to go and get some hot water. <sighs> Don't run away. Oh, actually, we could use that hot water. You reckon that'd melt? That's recycling. That's pure genius, isn't it? Let me get that cap off of there somehow. I have no idea, darling. I don't know where your mixing bowls are. But she's going to find out because we're mixing bowls around here full of wax. And so, I don't know, I reckon that could be interesting. So apparently, apparently today I'm meant to be buying mixing bowls. So just remind me that I'm gonna get a mixing bowl. Anyway, and I got some old lunch box. So I thought, well, that'll work. I'll use the last little bit in there. We'll see how much we get. Oh, we're getting to the top of it already. That's all right, that'll just come out anyway. We've got one big, really clean stuff and then we'll have these little bowls that have got a bit of muck. Because we didn't get all the crap off the top. But anyway, that'll be right. When you're doing this in the saucepan, you've got to do it about five or six times, so this is pretty cool. I wonder if we actually, where's my trusty paintbrush and me? What do I do with that stupid box that had the crappy? Here we go. And we're up to the tap, so we're nearly drained off, we are. Groovy doovy doovy. Right, put that back over there. Get another lunch pail. Put your lunch pail here. So it's getting down to the tap. So we're gonna get a little few bumpy bits on the top of this, but this is gonna be a bowl of fairly pure clean wax, which is gonna be cool. We'll put that on the table with a for sale sign on it and see whether the wife wants to buy it off me. She'll probably tell me to get fucked. But still, I'm a lucky man, actually. She's a good woman. She's put up with my crap for 30 years, which is a bloody good effort. I think she'd be out on parole if she'd murdered me. <laughs> so, that's a stupid joke. You know, you get that stupid joke where they say, hey, you get less for murder. No, it's not my anyway. I don't know. I'm going off the track here a bit. <laughs> oh, that looks good. I wonder if we want to get rid of the rest of that poop. Here's me. Get rid of the rest of it as well, I reckon, and then we'll take the top of it off. And then I think you could actually do the next melt. You'll have a bit of this left in here and you go again. This is kind of cool though. As I was saying earlier, the wife was wondering where all the mixing bowls is. I'm just having a bit of a look around here. There's yet another one. There's about three or four others I've got over here that I've been using. So I think I've been a very naughty husband. Dear idea, but that wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary, would it? So anyway, I'm gonna run it through the spaghetti strainer, which is all nice and clean until I get hold of it. So, God. Oh. 
Ooh, it's starting to get firmed up already. Maybe this is a bad idea. Yeah, it doesn't take long to cool off, does it? Because it's not on a super hot temperature. No, that's the idea of it. Because apparently if you have it all too hot, the wax will crack. So that's kind of the whole premise of this X situation, is if you do it nice and gentle like this, your wax would come out nice and clean and also shouldn't um, crack. So it should solidify better, in theory. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We're finding this crap out together, so I really don't know myself, to be quite honest. So I reckon the bloody saves a lot of rooting around. <laughs>